Why hello friends, Jen Foxbot here. Welcome to another edition of Math Mondays. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So special treat today because there's actually two episodes. This is the second one. Um, two separate topics. The first episode finishes up center of mass calculations by looking at objects with a non-uniform mass distribution. And that is a formal way of saying objects with uneven mass. Um, so like the human body. And in this video, we are going to look at torque. Yay! Or as I found out when I switched from physics to engineering, uh, torque is also called moment. So if you're studying engineering or happen to be an engineer like myself, uh, you might be calling it moment. To be fair, I still actually call it torque because that was the original foundation, but I'm very glad I figured that out. It took me a couple weeks and I was very confused for a hot second. Anyway, torque is super useful and it's how we open doors. Yay! Yeah. So we use it every single day. Um, quick caveat, if you have ever gone to open a door and you have done the opposite thing that you needed to, like you tried to push it instead of pull it, it's not your fault. It's a bad design. A good design should be obvious. So, um, but what's interesting is that once we get to a certain age and we have opened enough doors, we know that we have to apply a force that is perpendicular to the door or at right angles to the door. Um, it doesn't really work if we were to try and push the door this way. It's not going to open. Similarly, we know that we have to apply the force um, at the point uh, away from the point at which it rotates. And another way to phrase that is that um, the door is going to rotate about an axis of rotation. So if my hand represents the door and this is the axis of rotation, it's going to open and close like that. So it's going to rotate about this axis. And we know after a couple of trial and errors, we pick it up really quick, that we cannot apply a force about the axis or at the axis and it, like, it won't do anything. So to put that in mathematical terms, torque equals uh, the rotational, uh, the, vec the lever arm vector, R, which is measured from the axis of rotation to the point at which we're applying the force. So it's R cross the force vector. Um, we can simplify this by saying it's just the magnitude of this lever arm vector times the magnitude, uh, theoretically I should do this, times the magnitude of the force vector times the sine of the angle between them. So you'll notice that the torque is at a maximum when the two vectors are perpendicular, which is what we would expect. This is typically how models are generated. We use the mathematics to match reality and then it gives us a framework that allows us to apply to more complex situations. So in this case, if we were to do a top-down analysis, here is the hinge, here is our little doorknobs. We are applying a force at the doorknob. We, well, that's kind of confusing. We turn the doorknob and then we push at the doorknob. Um, or maybe if it's an outside door, it just has a little like, push me here pad. So in this case, our axis of rotation is here. The lever arm vector is measured from the angle, sorry, from the axis of rotation to the point at which the force is applied. That's super, super important. It always points away from the axis of rotation to the force point. So um, the angle up here is the angle between the lever arm vector and the force vector. So if we were to say, uh, let's put some numbers on this. If we were to say that our lever arm was 0 0.5 meters or half a meter and our force was five newtons, then the torque would be um, 0 0.5 meters times five newtons times sine of pi over two. That goes to one. So it's just one half times five, which is gonna be 2.5 newton meters. Boom. Cool, right? Pretty straightforward. But as I'm sure you've learned when you've done problems like this in class, it's never this simple. And especially in the real world, it's never this simple. Or it very rarely is. And when it is, you're like, yes, I got this. 
Um, but my goal is to give you that, yes, I got this, even when it's not that simple. So let's do something that's a little bit different, um, a little bit more complicated. So let's say you have our your door hinging here and you have the door up here and here, and you decide to do a little test where you apply a force at a 30 degree angle. Um, whoops. Uh, this is our force vector and we'll say theta equals 30 degrees. Oh my gosh, that is a funny way to write it. Um, so we still have our lever arm vector points from the axis of rotation to the point at which our force is applied. So even though we're applying it at an angle, the force hits the door at this point. And so um, our angle, our lever arm vector still points here. So this is R. And in this case, there's a couple of approaches that we could take. One is to note that this angle is the angle between these two, so we can just plug it into here and we're good to go. The other option I want to show you, if this is not as obvious, is that you can break this force into its constituent parts. In other words, we use the right triangle to figure out the um, force that is parallel to the door, so we'll call this F parallel, and the force vector that is perpendicular to the door. And then we can just use trigonometry to figure out that this is the total force vector times sine of theta, where theta is here. Um, using our understanding of angles and good things like that, we know that this is the same angle here. And so this ends up being um, the total force vector times sine of pi over 6. Um, and sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. And so this ends up being 1 half times 5, whoops, which is 2.5 newtons. Um, so we'll end up with the same result because now, if we do this, um, you might have seen the most common form of torque is to say it's F perpendicular times R. And so now that we've calculated F perpendicular, we can use that standard common equation. So we get 2.5 newtons times 0.5 meters equals 1.25 newton meter. Boom. So that's really interesting, right? Because by applying the same force at a 30 degree angle, we significantly reduced the amount of torque on the door. In other words, the door is not going to move as much. Pretty interesting, right? And so you could do the same thing asking what happens if you have um, an outward angle like that. Um, and so then in this case, the angle between the two would be like that. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, and we will be using torque uh, to figure out how stable different objects are because stability turns out or tipping analysis is really an understanding of torque because if we have like a little square box like this and we apply a force in one direction, it's going to tip about an axis. So stability depends on torque. Super useful. All right. In the meantime, before we get to stability analysis, let me know if you have any questions about torque um, or moment, same thing, um, or vector analysis. It can be kind of confusing. So happy to answer any questions or dive into any uh, topics in more detail if need be. Just let me know. All right. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.